Hi girls and welcome back to my office in Dubai. I'm Nikki from NikkiB.com. We sell adjustable sports bras and high impact sports bras for women that want to be more active. But today we're not going to be talking about that. Instead, we're going to be talking about my favorite topic of the moment, which is the topic of feminine energy and how you can harness it to basically change your life in 2023. It's so important. It's so transformative for women. So in today's video I'm going to talk about what is feminine energy and most importantly how can it benefit you to focus on cultivating it within yourself why do you need a hobby a feminine energy hobby and then thirdly I'm going to talk about three categories of feminine hobbies and how I believe they best bring out the feminine energy traits that are so important to create balance within us and finally I'll give you guys a daily tip so that you can create more mindfulness around feminine energy First of all, I'll explain what the difference is between the two. So masculine energy is very much action-oriented energy, okay? Both men and women have both energies existing within them. And I think this is one of the most beautiful aspects of this topic because it basically ignores traditional gender roles and acknowledges the fact that men and women both have feminine and masculine energy that exists within them. So the masculine energy is the action-oriented side. It's the aggressive push productivity side it's the focus clarity it really likes rules and and like structures um, and it's very much about stability as well feminine energy on the other hand is very much about being intuitive with the self There's one aspect of it which is extremely collaborative, expressive, and an aspect of it which is about free-flowing energy. I call it the art of being, just being able to lean back, be in the moment, be present, creates a completely different energy and aura about yourself than being in your masculine energy, which is very much future-focused, pushing forward, thinking ahead, um, and that kind of thing. The other side of feminine energy is very creative. It's all about creativity, art, and nurturing, okay? So it's really that mothering, nurturing, cultivating side of feminine energy, okay? So you can see how the two are kind of polarizing, but it's really, I believe, like from all the research that I've done, I believe that you can become an extremely powerful woman if you are able to cultivate and harness both sides of the energies like traits from both sides so my own personal journey i became aware last year that i was very much operating in my masculine energy obviously i'm a female entrepreneur i also come from a background of working in corporate sales which is very much a masculine energy testosterone filled dominated space Um, and I found myself extremely unhappy suffering from depression I had really bad mental health as a result of that career that's why one of the reasons why I decided to set up my own business and now that I understand this concept I understand that it was really pushing me so far towards one energy trait that it was leaving me feeling empty and void on my feminine side and this is why I've it's one of the reasons that really has convinced me that it's important to have both and really create a balance across both because since I've I've incorporated a feminine energy hobby myself and more feminine energy mindfulness and as a daily practice and I already feel a thousand percent happier more balanced more calm my approach to business is completely different which I'll tell you guys a bit about and also my relationships are already changing and blossoming why is it important to have a feminine energy hobby so okay so if we focus on women in our 30s okay so typically we're in a phase of life where either we've gone down the career route where we are pushing extremely hard we're action oriented we're goal oriented um we're maybe going to the gym i mean if we talk to people that probably on this channel you know we're also going to the gym outside of work we're working on self-improvement and typically um that involves a lot of masculine energy traits and masculine energy push um, to get all of those things done and if you take it like completely opposite a woman that didn't go down the career path in their 30s and maybe cultivated a family instead also you might you might expect that 
somebody who has a family is maybe fully in their feminine energy because you know they're mothering and they're nurturing and they will be absolutely to an extent but what also could happen is you could be having to get everything done around the house you have all of these jobs you have to collect the kids you have to do the dinner the laundry the you just get into a doing mode and what happens is you start you completely neglect cultivating your own feminine energy the art of being being intuitive with yourself so really thinking about what your own needs are instead of focusing always on the needs of others you maybe have even become detached from the needs of yourself so you don't even know what are my needs what are my interests you know what are my hobbies so it's it's something that can create so much more centeredness and balance within yourself if you actually cultivate if you're not able to like completely give yourself a personality transplant because who is and you're in a certain lifestyle that dictates you must be in your masculine energy all the time I think a feminine energy hobby can be a really nice way of kind of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and cultivating a space just for yourself so that you can really start to become more connected again with yourself and become more balanced and more within your feminine energy. I just want to precast this video because I've seen a lot of different opinions about feminine energy online and I want to say that feminine energy is not anti-feminism the true sense there's people who have kind of taken it and have made it that they've made it about being submissive to men they've made it about getting your hair and nails done and always looking pretty and that's that's not what feminine energy is femininity is more about what's on the outside the hair the nails you know the youthful skin all of that kind of stuff but we're not talking about that we're talking about the energy that exists within ourselves that powerful feminine energy that maybe we've become disconnected from and how do we cultivate that? How do we create an art of being? How do, how do we cultivate an air of being able to lean back and receive from the universe, trust in the universe, be creative, have flow? How do we express ourselves? You know, if we've become disconnected from that, that's what we are looking to cultivate. And it makes women more powerful, not less. We're not looking at making women submissive. And it's not about getting men or attracting men from my perspective. It's all about creating a better balance within yourself and healthy well-being is, is from my perspective. And this is why I think hobbies are a great way to kind of introduce, introduce yourself into that. So I researched extensively on what do people consider to be feminine energy hobbies and there was a huge list. So what I've done is I basically put them into three categories and I've kind of graded them based on how much they kind of bring out those feminine energy traits. So let's crack on and see which hobbies might be of interest to you. Okay, so the first category, I've just called it Pilates slash yoga because I kind of feel like these two stand out on their own, uh, in their own category and it's because I, I genuinely feel like they're definitely feminine energy hobbies and they cultivate a lot of feminine energy traits um, number one primarily being female oriented environments that are interested in yoga so if you go to a yoga class typically it's going to be like 90% female in there so it has that lovely feminine collaborative energy about yoga and Pilates if you've ever been to a Pilates studio it's pretty much all women I don't think I've ever seen a man in Pilates and one thing I really like about it and one thing I would grade it highly on is in intuition with inner self and art of being for this category because it really I mean you're, it's all about connecting to the breath connecting to your body being really mindful about how your body is feeling every time you do a posture or a pose you're really like in the moment thinking about the needs of your body and how you feel and I think connecting with how you feel it then leads on to being able to express yourself more you know the more in tune we get with how our bodies feel and how we feel inside the better we're able it's kind of like the first step on the journey to expressing yourself more so intuition with the high with the inner self I would say is definitely a level one for Pilates and yoga collaborative I put yes and no because obviously yoga is something that you could do completely solo it's not necessarily collaborative with people around you because even though you might be in a group studio you are very much doing like solo work at the same time so maybe not as collaborative as other hobbies expressive I would say yes and no again because like I said it can lead on to you being connected with yourself and later being able to identify your own feelings but you're not able you're not actually expressing much in yoga and pilates it's more about rules the rules that are there and you're kind of following those rules if you like 
Um, art of being, definitely it's a level one for those. Creativity, I would say no for yoga and Pilates. I think obviously when you get more advanced into yoga, um, you can kind of like, I don't know, invent your own postures and stuff, I guess. But again, there's not really much room for creativity in that one because you are again just following rules, postures and set poses. But uh, number six, nurturing, I would say yes and no, because you are definitely nurturing health and well-being within yourself, high level of flexibility. It's super good for like mental well-being because there's so much time focused on the breath, breath work. Um, so I would say it's a really, really strong category of hobbies. One thing I dislike about yoga and pilates and one thing i kind of like at the same time i dislike that the classes are not necessarily very inclusive um just being really transparent with you guys i mean i live in dubai i've been to a pilates class and it's all kind of like western i mean everybody in the class was like thin western blonde in like you know uh, expensive athleisure wear and i wouldn't say it was necessarily very dynamic in terms of the types of people that are in those classes but maybe that's just the one that i went to in dubai i don't know it is inclusive in the sense that you can absolutely do pilates or yoga at home you can learn on youtube i'm actually going to put in the description a really amazing yoga channel i found uh, on youtube which is all seated yoga so if like me you already are extremely active and you don't want to just do more like hard grueling exercise but you do want to get the benefits of yoga you can do seated yoga so I do like a 15 minute practice maybe three times a week and it's amazing just for stretching really opening up the body and the hips but without it just being more exercise so I'll definitely tag that for you guys as well okay the next category is basically home decor slash painting slash drawing slash gardening and you could probably find other categories within that the reason i separated these from pilates and yoga is because i believe that the, this category of hobbies really are differentiated from yoga and pilates number one they don't have a foundation in exercise which is actually one of the things that i really really like about this category again like me if you already spend several hours a week like pushing yourself to go to the gym being really active walking exercising weight training you might not want to just add another hobby that is exercise oriented also i find personally for me exercise puts me in i mean certain types of exercise put me into a very masculine energy space um especially if i'm kind of like really having to motivate myself to go down to the gym i really have to get into a masculine energy space to get myself down there so it's really about pushing myself being action oriented getting it done so i was really interested to explore and understand the benefits of hobbies outside of exercise so this is a really good category for that so with home decor i would say like when i first heard of this i obviously being like career oriented and decided not to have kids and not being married and just decorating the home sounded like a very like mumsy kind of like homemaker thing to do which is very much out of my own personal comfort zone and like how i identify however when i thought about it there's actually like so much practical um purpose to doing this hobby which i really really like i'm a very practical person so i can't just do things for like one reason there needs to be like multiple facets for like why i want to do it I spend a lot of time at home being introverted and just beautifying your own space is a really, really nice way to add more value to your life without you having to push yourself outside of your comfort zone too much and be more social. Because a lot of hobbies involve being social, in interacting with other people, and that's great if you are an extroverted person. But if you are more introverted, it's not necessarily always healthy for yourself mentally to be constantly pushing yourself to be the opposite of what you are sometimes it's really nice to identify what really connects like what really makes you internally happy and if spending a lot of time at home makes you happy then beautifying your environment through home decor is a really nice way of creating more well-being within yourself there's nothing wrong with it absolutely not and there's loads of pages on social media around home decor you can learn to do absolutely anything from a diy perspective even just small things like incorporating like faux flowers into your home like these little things that i have here just can create such a beautiful space um and i just think it's brilliant in terms of um if we look at like painting and drawing for example this is 
another thing you can set up a little easel in your home in like a quiet corner maybe with a little bit of sunlight coming in where you've got a nice view and just to inspire yourself to maybe paint or draw again it's something that you can it's so inclusive because absolutely anyone can do it with zero budget and also you can learn like there's so many youtube tutorials there's so many ways you can learn online without even leaving the house without having to spend money on a course or anything like that and if you are more practical like me and you kind of don't like the idea of maybe spending hours on something for it then just to kind of like sit there like you know if you do a drawing it's like okay well what am I going to do just have a book of drawings that I've spent hours on and then like what do I do with it like if you're practical you're going to understand where I'm coming from with that but I thought again you can incorporate it into the home decor aspect because you could basically send your drawings off to a print company get it printed and put it into a canvas you could paint your pets you can paint anything that you think is relevant to like individual rooms in your home and actually hang your own art in your home so I think that's an extremely practical way of using that um, so it's definitely not a waste of time by any stretch of the imagination and gardening again really similar to the home decor it's really about cultivating your own space so if we look at the feminine energy um, traits here like does it you know do these hobbies create a, a connected like intuition with the inner self absolutely because you're connecting with what you personally like to do how you personally like things to look what you would personally like to paint and draw it's not about anybody else it's connecting with your own feminine energy needs and wants once so 100% level one for that collaborative I would say I would say no but it could be so for example like when I decorate the home I don't just like go off on a tangent and do my own thing you know I'm obviously consulting with other people who live in the home so it could be something that you could do with somebody else especially like even with gardening or with painting you could go to painting classes with your friends if you wanted to same with drawing but I would say mostly these are kind of like easy solo um, hobbies that anybody can kind of take up themselves at any time expressive absolutely yes I would say level one does it create an art of being absolutely because when you are painting when you're drawing when you're gardening you are very much immersed in what you're doing and it creates a really nice I mean gardening is absolutely amazing because you're also connecting with nature at the same time extremely feminine energy um, activity painting painting and drawing you're just really connecting with yourself and the same with home decor you're connecting with your own sense of like your own sense of what you consider to be beautiful like you are very much connected with the self and very much being present in the moment as you're making things creativity I think we can say absolutely yes level one for those and nurturing again I find all of those activities in that category extremely especially home decor and gardening I would say is extremely nurturing quality and will really connect you with that nurturing side of yourself I think for me especially just being like very action oriented career kind of persona spending a little bit time a little bit of time at the beginning of this year to really like um, you know spend some time on home decor and just beautifying my space has definitely connected me with the nurturing side of myself that I'm not getting through having kids looking after a family all of that kind of stuff it's the same with having pets that's also connected me with a very like nurturing and mothering side of myself so all of these things they really just help bring out that already exists within you these beautiful feminine traits and just as a result you find yourself just feeling so much happier more balanced more calm because you're just allocating energy to uh, all of the aspects of yourself <clears throat> and therefore all of your you're tapping into all of your power as a woman okay the final category is my personal favorite and I absolutely never thought I would be saying this but this is the one that I decided to take up this year and I've been doing my personal one for about four weeks now which I'm going to tell you guys about is dance slash pole slash aerial hoop I've just selected these but like obviously within the category of dance there are a million different styles of dance that you could maybe adopt when I first heard when I was first reading about this I was just like absolutely not there's no way you're going to be getting me to do like hip-hop dance class in front of strangers like no mortifying like I would never I could never you know like absolutely not and it wasn't until I started researching 
like the different forms of dance, I realised and remembered salsa, which is something that I've done intermittently, um, like for years kind of thing. Like I think I went to my first salsa class with my mum when I was age like, I don't know, 16 or something. Um, then didn't didn't do it again until I was about 27. I was friends with a guy who was a salsa instructor. So I went to a few dance nights with him, absolutely loved it. Again, left it until now, 34. And I was just like, you know what? That's when I was looking at the feminine energy traits, I was like, there is absolutely nothing that ticks all the boxes like dance in a sense. I mean, I think the home decor category is really strong. But things like dance, pole, aerial hoop um, are extremely expressive. So if you go through the different ones, so you've got intuition with the inner self, absolutely. Again, it's very much focused on the body. Um, You're very much, you need to be mindful of like, every aspect of your body how it's moving how it's feeling you know you need to know when you're pushing yourself a little bit too hard you're very much aware of the things that you can't do so it does really create create that inner intuition within a self the other thing i had a bit of a like a aha moment when i did salsa so i decided to start private lessons and group my second ever salsa lesson i was dancing with the instructor and we did like a turn it was like he taught me a couple of things and we did it for the first time like perfectly and I just got like hairs just stood up on all my arms like it was just like an outer body experience I was just like I I get actually really emotional when I think about that moment because I was just like oh my god like what just happened I was just so connected and so like just the beauty of it the moment like everything about it i was like this is 100 percent what i want to do so when you look at the intuition within a self it's amazing because it brought out that moment so intuition absolutely collaborative obviously of course it doesn't matter what style of dance that you choose and i would honestly guys really encourage you to thoroughly research all the different types of dance what's going on in your city what kind of classes collaborative is absolutely the case whether you decide to go private one-on-one if like me you're a little bit more introverted it's a really easy like accessible way to get do something collaborative because it's just with one person so it's it's really like not intimidating you've also got obviously group you can do purely group classes and dance and loads of different styles of dance so definitely collaborative expressive absolutely yes you are completely expressing yourself both physically and like whatever you design in your mind so when you learn how to do the steps so say if you take salsa for example they teach you all the different moves and the steps but then when you dance with somebody it's all about you expressing like what you want to do in that moment like you are very much just designing things as you go i used to think when people were dancing that like it was it had already been pre-choreographed but then i've learned that in salsa there's like different moves and different signals that the guy gives you and that's how you know which one he wants you to do and then there's like moments where you do your own they call it shines where you just like do your own thing for a while so it's extremely expressive free flowing and that art of being absolutely you will get that from dance any type of dance if you do pole if you do aerial hoop you are so in the moment you are so focused on just being in that moment being present you can't really think about anything else because you have so much going on with the body and the mind and focusing on the practice itself it's definitely an art of being activity creativity absolutely yes because again you're expressing your own creativity your own things that you like to do once you've actually learned how to do it you're then very much in that creative space nurturing i would say no yes and no it doesn't really hit nurturing from like a cultivating nurturing of others perspective but it definitely does nurture relationships with others so i find it extremely social um my my program that i'm on or the dance academy that i'm in it's like private group and then they have socials every friday and so i'm not only nurturing myself and my inner like needs and desires but i am actually nurturing and cultivating new relationships with others so it's really helped me especially as an introverted person to get out there be out and be social but it's had a really like easy entrance so like private first with the instructor then you go to group class and that same instructor is there and then you kind of make some little 
of friends there and you know you go to social sort of thing so I'm sure I, I mean I've done both aerial hoop and pole and they're all ex they're all very very similar in that regard they all tick those boxes um, so I would highly highly um, champion this category even if you find the concept of dancing in front of other people scary I would say anything where you're doing like one-on-one -on -one styles like with the salsa bachata um, tango merengue like that kind of stuff and I'm sure there's millions of others that I know nothing about and um, you really do get that opportunity to to tick all those boxes okay so I hope I've inspired you to maybe consider instead of just doing work and exercise this year to open your mind to maybe incorporating a new feminine energy hobby purely for yourself purely self self selfishly selfishly for yourself so that you can better develop the other side of yourself as I've said I first started doing salsa four weeks ago and it has had a knock-on effect both in how I'm approaching my business, both in how, like if I just take the business for example, I'm very much stepping back a lot more. I'm very much just leaning back, letting people do their jobs, not micromanaging every process within the business. I'm just letting the business be, you know? It's doing well, it doesn't need so much push and like hardship and I'm delegating more and letting people take the lead on their own roles, which is something that I really struggled with before. So it's just cultivating this different side of me. I'm also just not prioritizing work as like the core of my life, because now that I've obviously incorporated this feminine energy hobby, I've realized that so much of my happiness can come outside of work in the form of like this really creative expressive um hobby so i don't prioritize work i actually like try and incorporate dance dance practice into as much of my day as possible and kind of scaling back work as much as possible um and it's just like i said it's just not many people just live their lives in such a routine that you just don't even think to incorporate something like this but once you do it you just realize like it just changes your mindset i'm definitely much better at just being in the moment being present and not worrying about the future i don't know how it's kind of like it's when you first start exercising you realize it has all these additional benefits other than making your body look good that's exactly my experience of like incorporating this feminine energy hobby so i really hope please let me know in the comments if you guys plan to research some of this by the way before i move on to the next thing i just want to recommend three feminine energy channels um i will also put them in the description these have really helped me just understand the concept of feminine energy so on youtube you've got the feminine universe you've got the Fem Daily, and you've got our Lexus. So I'll put them in the description for you. I highly encourage you to go and watch these three channels. This will give you a really good overview of what feminine energy actually means the misconceptions around it, how you can uh, foster it in different aspects of your life. Honestly, the Feminine Universe was the first one I discovered and it was just absolutely amazing. But I do find it very much leaning towards a little bit more on femininity and like the outer self. The fem, My Femme Daily, amazing and our Lexus she really both of those ladies really really understand the actual inner concept of feminine energy amazing to watch so please watch them please let me know um what kind of hobbies you are thinking about or even if you do a feminine energy hobby yourself and please let other people know in the comments what that has done for you I really feel like this is something that instead of just focusing on more fitness goals more work goals this year why are we not focusing on something that's going to help us cultivate a more balanced self in a different way Way than what we've thought of before super super encourage everybody to do so the other thing i just want to finally um leave on is um the daily practice so obviously i've been journaling for a long time as a business entrepreneur it's something that they encourage everybody to do just in terms of planning your day getting all your thoughts down and all that kind of stuff but i've actually started to incorporate this concept of feminine energy into my daily journaling so really focusing on prompts like each day i'll put the prompts into the, the description but things like how am i feeling today instead of being like you know what am i to do list today or what tasks do i need to get done today maybe just start the day with how am i feeling like literally just connect with the self i mean this is all like typical journaling stuff anyway but also like um 
what's this why yeah like who do I want to connect with today in terms of collaborative what do I feel like I need to express today in terms of my needs and my feelings so this can be you know focusing on what you feel like you need to say to your family what you feel like you just need to express in general um I think it's really important to connect with like what do you maybe feel like you yeah what do you need to feel like you need to express basically for the day um what are my planned what are my planned activities today to help me be present so whether that's planning in some journaling some yoga feminine energy hobby what will i create today i think this is a really nice one because it's focusing on like the day instead of thinking about like tomorrow the week like blah blah blah. it's actually just thinking like say if i had one day left to live like what do i want to create today and just re- that really helps me ground me in the moment and really gets me present in the moment instead of just seeing the day as like a part of the week as a whole and just like focusing on a wider goal it's actually just really like what can i create today like what difference can i make today almost um and how will i help somebody today i think this is a really nice one again in terms of nurturing and collaborative it gets you into the headspace of thinking not everything you want to do is about yourself but also like what what could you do today that's different from what you would normally do to actually help somebody else this really puts you in a really nice feminine energy um, space also and then you can go on to do your daily tasks like you're planning for the day your work and stuff like that but it's just really making sure that you don't jump into the masculine energy goal setting and action oriented side of yourself and it just helps you kind of focus in on those feminine energy side you'll just find yourself much calmer and much more present for the rest of the day or that's exactly that's kind of how I found it anyway so I hope I'm sorry this video is a little bit longer than expected but I really hope there was enough content in there for it to be valuable to you guys please let me know if you are interested in this topic because I would absolutely love to share more please let me know if you already have a feminine energy hobby or if you would like to incorporate one and let me know what that would be in the comments and I absolutely love you guys thank you so much we just went over 50,000 subscribers in three months is insane and obviously I'll be bringing you a lot more fitness related sports bra related uh, content I hope you guys have an amazing feminine energy week ahead and I'll speak to you in the next video bye